Good morning. Going hard for Christ Church. Good morning. How are y'all doing? Good morning, online family. We're reminded of the word of the Lord when David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us go to the place where we can release our trials. Let us go into the place where he makes all things well. Hallelujah. So I want to remind y'all of the word today. Exodus 3 verse 14. And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say to the children of Israel, I am have sent me. So today, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for being the great I am. We thank you for being great and mighty Jehovah. We put nothing above your name today in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're above every circumstance. You're above every thought. You're above every emotion, Lord God. So today we exalt you, Lord God. We trust and believe that you are I am, that you are Yahweh, that you are El Shikadu, Lord God. God is my righteousness, that you are a healer, that you are Jehovah Rapha, Lord God, that you are Jehovah Nisi, Lord God. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. I am everything for every reason in the name of Jesus, Lord God. So today we remember our first love, Lord God. We remember how you pulled on us. We remember how you gave us mercy. We remember, Lord God, how you healed us. We remember remember how you brought us over we remember that you carried us we remember that you carried us we remember that you carried us God you carried us through God you carried us through God you carried us through God through every trial through every tribulation through every setback Lord God you carried us 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 God you carried us God you healed us Lord God it didn't come how we wanted it didn't it didn't come how we expected it Lord God but you brought us today Lord God you saved us Lord God we didn't get into a car accident we didn't lose our minds Lord God we came with the activity of our limbs we came in our right mind and so today we lift you up and we push back everything that would stand in your way we push back everything that will compete with your voice for you are uncreated you have no rival you have no equal so we don't lose our bow we don't lose our bow we don't lose our bow god we don't lose our bow god and we love you and we praise you in jesus name amen come on somebody just give god some praise right there come on if you think about what she said he carried us through come on he, he got us so amen he is the healer He's the deliverer. He's the way maker. Come on, David said, I will call upon the Lord, for he is worthy to be present. So shall I be saved. For has anybody been saved from their enemies today? Come on, what was your enemy? It could have been cancer. It could have been addiction. It could have been the drug house. It could have been sex. It could have been a whole lot of stuff. Has anybody else been delivered in here today? Hallelujah. Well, y'all, I'm ready to praise God this one. I need about 35 of y'all to run down to this altar. We gonna sing a new song, but it's real simple. Y'all know I love when y'all sing with me, so can y'all help me today? Everybody just clap your hands. We in there today. Repeat after me right here. Everybody say, oh, 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 oh. Hey! <laughs> 
free. I hear you go hard. Say, I will call upon the Lord. Come on, for he is worthy to be praised. And so shall I be saved from my enemies.
revelation. I know there is circumstance. We give your name glory. We give your name glory. Somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. Somebody shall glory. We bless your name. We bless your name. You're the Lord over my life. Hallelujah. You're the Lord over my life. Hallelujah. He's the Lord over my life. Lord over my life. He's the Lord over my life. He's the Lord over my life. He's the Lord over my life. you 
Jesus. You're the same yesterday and forever, Lord. Oh, we reverence you, Jesus. We exalt you, Jesus. We lift you up, Jesus. Oh, you were the Lord. Oh, you were the Lord. Oh, we sing out of
Holy 
hands go away, hands go away, sing it out to be your name. Hands go away, hands go away to be praised. Your name, no other name is great, no other name is worthy, no other name is more wonderful. Your name. It's great to be praised. Your name is great. It's great to be praised. Oh, it's worthy you are. Worthy you are. And worthy you will be forever. Sing worthy. Worthy you are. Worthy you are, and worthy you are, and worthy you will be, Jesus. Oh, worthy you are, yeah. And worthy you are, worthy Come on, everybody, stretch your hands all over the temple. Come on, come on. I know some of us have already had our hands stretched, but that was a holy moment right there. Woo, holy, holy, holy. Come on, Amber. Come on, come on. Get us, take us right back there. Come on, just sit right there. Woo, some of us need to get familiar with the presence of the Lord. There are too many of us familiar with church, but we're not familiar with the presence. Oh, my God, that abides inside of the church. Oh, my God, this is not a time to scratch it off. Who step into the presence? Who, my God, lead the familiar? Allow your spirit to take you some place that your spirit want to go, but your flesh is holding you back from going. Who, he's a holy God. And when you meet a holy God, depression got to leave. Sickness got to mm, vacate the premises. Come on, somebody. Depression has to go, my God. Who, nothing unholy, nothing unholy. Come on, church. Nothing unholy shall be in the presence of the Lord. Oh, my God. So, Father God, let your holiness hit the areas of our life. Who let your holiness hit the areas of our life, Lord, where we're broken and wounded at, Father God. Mm. In the name of Jesus. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Oh, my God. Come on, praise team. Holy, 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 holy. Oh, my God. Some of y'all need to understand what it's like to serve a holy God. Some of y'all ain't never had a real encounter with God. Oh, my God. When you done tasted the goodness of the Lord. When you just seen God do some miraculous things in your life, it takes your worship to another level. It takes your worship from the outer court into the holiness of holiness, my God, where sin and flesh cannot go. Who, who am I talking to in the church, my God? Who, my God, come on, stretch your faith towards heaven. Come on, stretch your love towards heaven. Whatever you love, you worship. If you love God, then worship him. Come on. Whatever you love, you worship. Who, my God, so come on. Come on, come on, let's worship God. Who, my God, yes, Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lamb of God. Holy Lord, I can stay here all day. I can stay here all day. You've been so good to me, God. 205. Yes, Lord. Holy, 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 holy. Woo, Jesus. Come on, 15 more seconds. Come on. Come on. Get out the boat. Get out the boat and get in the water. Come on, Peters. Come on, Peters. Come on. Go a little deeper in your worship. Push from your spirit. Your flesh don't want to, but your spirit do. You holy, holy. holy you, Ooh, come on, praise and worship team. Come on.
thank you for your presence. Ooh, thank you for your forgiveness of all of my sins, God. Ooh, thank you for redeeming a life that was once lost. Thank you for your total deliverance. Ooh, ooh, thank you for mental healing. Ooh, not only just physical healing, but mental healing. Thank you. Ooh, thank you, Father God. Mm. So, Father God, we thank you now, Lord. Mm. As we prepare to move deeper into the service, God, we thank you for your holiness. Oh, my God. Mm. Father God, let your presence continue to set out on this embassy on today, God. Oh, God, we'll be so careful, Lord. Mm. Not to touch your holiness, not to disrupt or interfere with your holiness, Father God. Mm, have mercy on us, mm, sinners who are saved by grace. Thank you for your holiness. Father God, I thank you for the visitation at 205 today, God. I thank you for giving us an audience mm, with the throne room of heaven on today. I thank you that everything that we need from you today, we have access as kingdom citizens, Father God, we can access that what we need from heaven. I don't know what all these people in person online need from you today, God, but whatever they need, I pray that they access it by faith because you gave us keys to heaven. Oh, my God. So help us to use the right keys to pull down, to unlock, to open up. That what we need on today. I pray that you save somebody's soul. Oh God, there's too many people in here and everybody in this church ain't saved nor are they set free and delivered. So they are a prime candidate to give their life to Christ on today. And I reclaim by the authority that has been given to me as the set man of God in this church. Lord, every backsliding soul, every soul that is away from you, Father God, we're calling them in. This is not an hour to be away from God. So, Father God, we call it in, signs, miracles, and wonders. We thank you, Father God, that we have access to all that you have as sons and daughters, Father God. I thank you that you are a benevolent king. I thank you that you love your children so much that you have not withheld anything from us. And so, Father God, I thank you. Thank you for loving us when we didn't love ourselves. And, Father God, I thank you that while we were yet in sin, you came and died for us, Father God. When we wasn't fit to live and wasn't ready to die, you saw past all of our uh, shortcomings and failures and sinful ways and habits and still said she and he is worthy to die for. For that, Father God, we say thank you. Oh, somebody tell God thank you today. Oh, my God, somebody tell God thank you today. Oh, my God, somebody tell God, thank you today. He saw past all your needs, my God, and still died. Oh, my God, Father God, we love you. Now, Father God, bless and touch everything. Breathe. We give you permission to do business inside of your kingdom. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on, everybody, and say amen. Come on, come on. Go, go on off the cross. I said say amen. Okay, going off the cross. I need y'all to give God a war cry. Come on, let's give God a war cry. Hallelujah. One more time now that the music is softly going off for of Christ, please give God a going hard for Christ war cry. Now do me a favor, go hug your neighbor. Come on, set the atmosphere. Come on, get up, move. Go hug your neighbor. Come on, y'all know what we do. Go hug somebody. Somebody need it. Even if they wanna don't want to be hugged, look them in the face and say, I'm glad you're here. Even if they was drugged to church, that's okay. They better thank God they made it. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, we give God the glory. Oh, Lord, we thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set the atmosphere. Hug somebody. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let them know they're special. Let them know they're a necessity to the kingdom that God has need of them. Oh, my God, because they still here, that means they are a necessity to the kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Set all that atmosphere in the balcony up there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my God, hold it down up there for me, Gerald. Hold it down up there for me. Oh, my God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, going on for Christ. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Oh, my God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. My God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Well, as you're taking your seat, we want to welcome you to Go On Hard for Christ Church. If you're joining us online for the very first time, go ahead and click the first time guest link right there in the description. Let us know where you're watching from and how it is we can be a blessing to you in the future. 205, can we make some noise for the online family? Yes, sir. <laughs> Also, if this is your first time joining us today in person, would you do us the honor of standing all over the room? Any first time guests, just remain standing for just a second. Amen. Y'all make some noise for them. They popping up. Amen. Amen. Just remain standing. What you are receiving is our first time guest connection card. Go ahead and fill that out in its entirety. We just want to know how we can be a blessing to you in the future and how does you feel about our service today. Go on hard. Can we get on our feet and show them what, they, what we do when they come to 205? Make some noise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are going to get right into these announcements. Um, as always, you can check the Get Connected board in the foyer to find out what's happening here at Going Heart for Christ Church. Everybody say tomorrow. We will be having men's and women's discipleship. Make some noise. This is happening at 7 p.m. for anybody ages 16 and up. You don't have to be a member, but this is our chance to come together. Men meet with men, women meet with women, and we uncover two. It's a great time of transparency and empowerment, so you do not want to miss um, discipleship. This Wednesday, also, we have midweek circle up and glow for our kids. 30, and service starts at 7. Make sure that you are in the house. I want to bring up Minister Chia for a wonderful announcement. Y'all make some noise for it. Yes, the God is good, y'all. He is, he's good. So I just came to make a simple announcement. I just want to remind everyone that this Friday, say this Friday, November 10th, this Friday, November 10th at 7 o'clock, uh, the Young Adults Ministry here at Going Heart for Christ is doing our soft lunch with a worship night. Uh, the graphic should be up in a second, but we want you guys to come out. It is only open to Going Hard for Christ family outside of the ages of 18 to 30. So if you are a part of Going Hard for Christ, if you're visiting, you're scoping the scene out, it doesn't matter. We want you to come in the house. And if you have cousins, nieces, nephews, sons, daughters that are 18 to 30, we want them in the house. Listen, we have a special guest, Osby Berry, will be leading us in worship. And we are excited. Listen, if you were here for the youth encounter, then you know that it is about to go down. So we want you to be here at 7 o'clock, sharp 7 o'clock, and come and enjoy worship with us. Amen? Amen. Amen, y'all. I got to I got to peep in yesterday on their rehearsal. They was in here going crazy. The Spirit of the Lord came in, and I was up in the balcony, Lee, Greg, and Israel was up there like, Jesus! So you need to be here on Friday. If you need a touch from God, if you are hungry, if you need just a moment to soak in His presence, you can lay out. God's gonna move on Friday night. Y'all make some noise for young adults. We're excited. Amen. And today after service, we're going to be having a meeting in the fellowship hall for anybody interested in the jail and prison ministry. So if you signed up where we put out our commitment sheets, not our volunteer sheets, our commitment sheets, amen, uh, make sure that you are committed to being in that meeting after church today, amen? Amen. And if there's anybody in the room today with a birthday this month, could you stand for 15 seconds? Any November birthdays, stand up. Y'all make some noise for them. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. We just wanted to acknowledge y'all. Ain't no cake or ice cream or nothing, but that was your moment. Y'all make some noise for the November birthdays, amen. <laughs> yes, well, it's time for the offering. <laughs> Hallelujah, y'all. We are excited to give here at Going Hard for Christ Church. Uh, we know that God loves a cheerful giver, so if you need an envelope, go ahead and slip your hand up all over the room. Your ways to give are going to be on the screen. You got the QR code, text to give, all that wonderful stuff. One thing I love, what I've noticed, past is that they come here with a seed in their hand already. And so y'all don't need too long to get ready. But go ahead and scan this if you need it. And also go ahead and send it in, text it in, all that stuff. Amen. And our pastors, of course, want to thank you for your faithfulness and giving us an honor. It's a beautiful thing for a church this size to not have to beg for anything. We thank God for gifted givers. We thank God and we believe in God to send more um, as we continue to fund the vision and the mission that God has given our set man, our apostle, Lawrence Peoples. Amen. <laughs> Let's go ahead and stand up all over the room if you're ready. We're going to give God our wave offering. Amen. Everybody standing there can. This is how we honor God. We just wave it front to back just like this. Oh, yes. 
Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity to give in your presence. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord God, to sow into good ground. Father God, we are believing you this year, Lord God, for economic opportunities, Lord God, for gifts and surprises, Father God, for new streams of income. Father God, we thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your power today, Father God, as we sow. We ask, Lord God, that you, Lord God, would grace this seed, Father God, with your presence and with your power. Father God, may we see increase in our lives in every area. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we sow with cheerfulness. We sow with gratitude, Lord God. We are honored to give back what you've given to us, Father God. You only ask for 10%, Father God. You give us stewardship over the 90. So today, give us new grace to steward that which you're trusting and entrusting to us. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Let's bring around those first-time guest connection cards and those offerings. Amen. seated, may be seated, and just for all those that religious, that, uh, that bothered you, or offended you, I'm sorry, because free people are what? Free. And when you are free in your personal life, it will show up, uh, when you're free in your private life, it will show up in your public life. And I don't know about y'all, but it's so... <laughs> See, you dance for the clothes, but you get to church, all you want to act all stiff and all that. My God, free people act free, baby. I don't give a... Yeah, my God. Oh, my God. Hey, I love you, Jesus. Woo. I worship and adore you. Just wanted to tell you. Like I love you, I love you, Jesus. 
like I love you. Say like I like I like I love you. Like I like I like I love you. Say like I like I like I love you. Cause I never say, cause I never love nobody like I love you. Say like I like I like I love you. Hallelujah. Like I like I come on, brother Mike, come on, brother Mike. Like I like I like I love you. Hey. Like I like I like I love you. Cause I never love nobody like I love you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I checked some of y'all out on social media when y'all partying on the boats and all at the club. Y'all turned up and y'all y'all at lefties, what is it, lefties or whatever. Y'all, yeah, y'all get in the church, y'all want them. Oh my God, but giving honor to God, we thank God. Come on, let's give our praise and worship a hand today, y'all. Amen, amen, amen. You know, we have a couple of people that's out battling that uh, little virus that's going around. The first lady is one of them, my God, and there's many of them, my God, Kim and Sister Lawine. There's several people, my God, that's fighting that virus. Y'all make sure y'all get some. What's the elderberry? Get some orange juice, uh, vitamin C, get some stuff inside of you, my God. My God, make sure you take care of yourself. The Bible says you got to learn how to live well. That means you got to make wise choices and decisions to protect your life, my God. There's sickness out there in the land, my God. So you got to put your arm on so can't nothing get to you. Come on, somebody. I said you got to put your arm on so can't nothing get to you. Amen. So I'm so thankful, my God. The spirit is set. Everything is in its place. I'm excited about this portion of the service, my God, as we get ready to welcome to the family of going off for Christ some people that decide not to be involved with the church but to be committed to the God of the church. Uh, Y'all missed that. Not to be involved with the church, to be committed not to the church, to the God of the church. Because if you commit to God, you'll be committed to the church. It go hand in hand. Come on, somebody. Yes, and so I'm just so thankful, my God, this will be our last uh, new members for the year, my God. Hopefully, if the Lord delay is coming, we get a chance to cross over into 2024, my God. Then we'll take it from there. But I am excited about this last wave. And uh, Minister Lanny was telling me this morning, Minister Kevin, that I think maybe one or two people are uh, repeat uh, offenders for us going through the vision. If almost all y'all in discipleship one is first time us, my God, at the foundation, over half of them, my God, I don't know how many of over half of them is first time us going through the vision. So what we have is not the same people being recycled. We have so many new people that's going through the vision of going off of Christ Church. And, and I give God some glory for that. Come on, give God a hand. Amen. Can y'all hear me all right up top up there? Amen. Y'all looking real good up there. Uh, my God, at this present time, I'm happy to call to the podium, my God, as we get ready to welcome all of our first-time guests to the house. Uh, my spirit, my daughter, my biological daughter, I said spirit, my biological daughter, Naila, come on, let's give God a hand for my, my daughter. Uh-huh. Amen. Yeah, I think Vontaze prophesied when I was on the boat floating that, uh, what is it, Sarah Jackson on it? <laughs> Amen. It's my baby. Right? Ain't she a dime piece? Like, <laughs> Amen. I love my baby. Amen. Amen. She's going to begin to call the names of all those, my God, that has elected to be committed to the family. And when you come, Pastor Champ and uh, will help you up, up the stairs. And you will come up and you will line up and we will hand you a, a certificate, my God. And you will just stand till we get ready to bless you and then release you into the service, my God. Okay, you got them. Amen. Forgive me in advance. Some of you guys' names are tough to pronounce. Um, the first person, Derrica Cooper or Derrica? Derrica? <laughs> Ooh, amen. When she come up, just have her pronounce her name so we okay. can get it right. Can you pronounce your name? Derrica. Okay. Derrica? God bless you. Welcome to the family. Here you go. Just come stand right beside him and hold that up, okay? The next family member, Sarah Foreman. 
Sarah Foreman. Hold the mic up. Amen. I like that hat you got on, woman of God. Bless you. Mm-hmm. Shalanda Hicks. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you, woman of God. Yes. Moses. Thank you. <laughs> Moses. Boy, I thought you already joined. What took you so long? So many of y'all coming. Hey, Amen. It's all good, though. Young man, I'm so proud of that young man. How old are you, Moses? 22. At 22 years old. At 22 years old, he has a heart for God. Have already bought his, bought, not rent, bought his own home. Come on, somebody. My God. When he came to going off for Christ about, how long ago? Two years ago? Two years ago, he didn't even believe in God. Now he's one of our main servants in the kingdom, handling kingdom business. Yeah. Just giving God the glory. This would happen when you're not a traditional religious, traditional and religious church. Traditional and religious church. He'd probably still be struggling with his belief system in God. But because we teach kingdom, it makes all the difference. Kingdom will make a difference in all of our lives if we just embrace it. Kingdom requires a different mindset. Requires a different attitude. It requires that we approach God with reverence when we come to the house of the Lord. We come, my God, understanding that I'm here to honor the king. And when you understand kingdom royalty and kingdom, oh, my God, uh, structure, my God, you, are, you tend to serve God and approach God and read and pray from a different perspective. You don't come to God with a sense of entitlement. You come with a sense of reverence. Jessica Isom. Jessica. Amen. God bless you. Yes, baby. Ernika Reynolds. Amen. Tiffany Reynolds. God bless Amen. Tiff, bless you. Well, you got a whole lot of young adults that's gonna be there next this Friday. Amen. <laughs> mm -hmm. Malachi Smith. Malachi. <laughs> he must have to go to work. Let's go. Manace Teo? Manasseh? Manasseh? Manasseh. Ah! Woo! I've been waiting on this one. Somebody give God some glory. <laughs> oh, you want a hug? Amen. God bless you. Mm. Let's get it. Mm. Oh. You can make God. Bless you, man. See, that right there, what you just witnessed is somebody, and I don't really know him, that appreciate what we bring and what we offer in this ministry. That hug was a hug, a manly hug, a thank you hug. I give God the glory hug. I'm on the right track. I'm, I'm, I'm getting out of church and getting in the kingdom now. Okay, okay. Kishara Teo. Yeah. And he got his dime right behind him. Everything's in order in the kingdom. God bless you. God bless you, baby. Yes. Mm -hmm. Helena 
Alaya Thomas. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Mm. Bless you. Mm. Thank you. Angela Walker. Now you miss our tree, oh, yeah. sister. Amen. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. This is an answer to prayer right here. Absolutely. God bless you. Absolutely. I am so it. Mm. Who the faithful prayers of the righteous? See, some of y'all would cause your family member don't come the first time. Come on. Uh, come on, cause your family member don't come the first time you invite them. Come on, or they do something that you don't like, you stop praying for them. But she has stood in the gap for her sister. Now her sister's a member of 205 South Sheridan. Oh my God. Mm. Now it's no longer our Teresa's church, it's her sister's church. I'm not just your pastor, I'm her pastor. Now somebody give God a hand for that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Amen. Melissa Warren. Melissa. Amen. Young adults. <laughs> Come on, Sister Melissa. Amen. God bless you. Bless you. Justin Webb. Oh, Brother Justin. Uh. Yes, Lord. You told me you said you was on my way to shoot. Oh, it's going down. Already. <laughs> okay. Hey, man, he said, I told you it was going down. <laughs> Brother Ford, I'm so glad we ain't religious at 205 South Church. God bless you, man of God. <laughs> Amen. Sanik. <laughs> Kingdom builders. Kingdom builders. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. If you lead right, men, they'll follow right. God bless you, baby. Bless you. Again, men, if you lead right, they'll follow right. You don't have to hit them upside the head with a bitty club. Just lead right. Just make sure your life, my God, match it. Make sure your lifestyle match what you're talking about. They'll come in submission. Mm -hmm. And last, Michelle West. Amen. Amen, Sister Michelle. Mm. Where's Apostle Lewis at? Apostle Lewis here. Come down, sir. God bless you, Sister West. I'm looking forward to those gifts and callings that is inside of you. We're going to help. Amen. I love it. I'm ready. Mm. I love it. You ready to commit? God bless you, woman of God. Amen. Come on, let's give the family a hand, y'all. Let's stand. Let's stand all over the temple. Felicia, I'll let you get a picture of that. So everybody, everybody take your, yeah, just turn around so everybody can see it. Look that way. She's going to get a good picture of that right there. Make sure. That's a good looking group. to all some young adults, too. Amen. I said, Lord. Ooh, look at 205. I tell you, feel me. <laughs> yes, Lord. Okay, I'm going to have, if y'all would remain standing, I'm going to have Apostle Lewis speak a blessing over your life, and then we're going to move forward in the service. But before I release my spiritual son, I want you to know that I'm so thankful, on, even on behalf of my wife. She's probably watching. She ain't feeling well, but on behalf of the Going Off of Christ family as well, my, we thank God for y'all. Don't take your lightly. Lightly that you have chosen. My spiritual father has always taught me people do not have to allow you or let you pastor them. If someone come up under your leadership and they choose to submit their life to you, take that very seriously. That's why I thank God, mother, for training. That's why I'm so glad I'm not a renegade up here doing it how I want to do it. But I got oversight and covering people I answer to, people that I'm accountable to, my God. And I thank God that you have chosen, my God, to allow me and my wife. It is untraditional. 
unconventional pastor, my God, to lead you, my God. I promise you, myself, my wife, as well as this team, my God, will do our best to pastor your soul. I didn't come to preach to you. I come to pastor you. There's a difference. See, preaching, my God, just get you happy, get you excited, send you on your way. But when you're pastoring, that means I want your soul healthy. I want you to not to be a public success and a private failure. Pastoring feels much different than being preached to. I don't know all of your background, but most, probably most of you have been preached to all your life. Well, over at Going Off of Christ, we don't preach to you. We pastor you. Meaning that we have things in place like discipleship on Mondays and classes on Sundays. Different things to help you work out and work on your soul salvation. Come on. Amen. 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 So just know, my God, that you're going to be a uh, pastor. So that means you don't get to follow from the back. Got to begin to move forward and help allow God to help you discover what's in you. Because some of us don't even know what's in us. There's so much potential up here. So much potential. My God, world changes. When you go into an atmosphere, you change the atmosphere instead of the atmosphere changing you. You have authority. You have power. My God, that has been given to you. Every one of you have been called out. My God, of God. So God called us out of him. So if he called us out of him, that means we have his DNA. And so that means that we have authority. We have power. We can command our body to do things. We can speak in words. My God, things come into existence. Come on, somebody. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, you have a purpose. Your purpose is not just to come join the church. My God, your purpose is to come be a part of the church, but discover why God created you and then go serve your purpose into the world. Because the world needs what God's put in you. You are a necessity. There's a reason why you got breath in your body. And think it not strange, my God, when fiery trials begin to come upon you because you have decided to step into your next. Because you ever decided to step into your next, the devil going to do everything he can to disrupt, derail, distract, and discourage you from moving forward in the things of God. But I'm super excited. I'm so grateful. And we as a church family, my God, going to do our best, my God, to pastor you. Come on, one more time, family. Let's give. Hallelujah. Mm. Praise God. The book of Psalms says that the Lord takes the lonely, the desolate, the isolated, and puts them in families. Mm. And I heard the Spirit of God saying, before I pray, I just heard him saying, I'm taking many of you out of religion and putting you into the family of God. Mm. This is so much deeper than just joining another church. Yeah. Yeah. Because, number one, you're going to experience real love here. I was, I was where you were a little under two years ago. And I was hurting, and I was broken, and I was wounded, and just needed the truth. I've been in church all my life, but I didn't get a whole lot of truth. Mm. And so what I can say with great testimony and great honor is that you are going to receive the truth here. You're going to be in part of a family here. That people that will love you for who you are. Yes. Not for what you can do. Mm -hmm. And if you will allow the spirit of God to work through this man of God and through these people out here. God is going to extract out of you everything that he's called you to do and to be. Amen. Amen. If you all would, just join me and stretch your hands this way. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for each and every individual. We thank you for every marriage. We thank you for every family represented. Bless them, Jesus. We give you praise, oh God. We bless you, Lord, for these lives that are coming into this fold, oh God, into this sheepfold, Father, into this family of God, into this church, Lord God. We just want to say we thank you and we bless them now. Father. Yes, Lord. Thank you for raising them up, oh God. Thank you for causing all hurt, harm, and danger to fall off, fall thank by the Jesus. wayside, oh God. I give you praise that they are walking into a new level of peace, Father. Nothing lacking, nothing missing, and everything intact, oh God. I thank you, Father, for the process of healing that has already begun. I thank, oh Jesus, I thank you, Father, hallelujah, that the gifts and callings that are on their lives come without repentance, oh God. We receive it even now in the name of Jesus. For, them, for many of them, oh God, let a fresh anointing fall on them. Oh, Father, God. I thank you for renewing oh, relationship God. with them. Yes, Holy Lord. Spirit of God, I thank you for empowering them. Hallelujah. To stand tall through it all, it all God. Ooh, In the name oh, of God, Jesus, oh, we give you praise. Yeah, we give you honor. Jesus. We give you glory. Now, yes, family, just rejoice with Ooh, me glory. just for a few more minutes. Come on, give them a shout. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God bless you. You're now released. Take your time going down. <laughs> Amen. While they're coming down, let's just go ahead and let's all stand and turn with me to the book of Genesis. Good job, Anderson. I thank God for Apostle. He's always ready. Always ready. Amen. Once they come down, you get settled. Just We're making good time. Genesis chapter 50. All that's able to stand, I'm going to ask that you stand out of reverence to God's word. My God, and we're going to move. I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 50, starting at verse. I'm going to start at, uh, for my production team on verse 14. Genesis 50, verse 14. Genesis, the first book of the Bible. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And the last chapter of the first book of the Bible. So you can open up your Bibles or turn on your Bibles. I know a lot of us have Bibles on our phones. This modern new age technology. I'm a dinosaur. I need my Bible. Genesis chapter 14, I mean 50 verse 14. Do you have it? Say amen. amen. And the word of God reads from the NIV. After burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt together with his brothers and all the others who had gone with him to bury his father. Verse 15, when Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent a word, oh my God, to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. Verse 17 says, this is what you are to say to Joseph. Mm, mm, mm. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they have committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive. Please forgive. Please forgive. Uh, forgiveness is a choice. We're talking about you can't forgive because you can. God would never, add, we learned this in understanding your purpose and your potential. God, please understand and listen to what I'm about to say. Hey, Marco, God would never ask you to do something that you don't have the capabilities of doing. So if God is asking you in his sovereign word to do something, then you have to accept that you have the power to do it and authority. So forgiveness is a choice. You have to choose to forgive. Pastor, it's harder than that. It's hard when we try to do it as I taught y'all in the flesh. Your spirit always want to do the right thing because your spirit is created in God's image. Your spirit, man, always want to obey the things of God. The reason why we won't forgive is because our flesh don't want to forgive. Our flesh want to remember. Some of us like to hurt. Some of us don't mind being angry at that person. It makes us feel good. It's a form of Egypt, captivity, bondage. Some people don't know how to exist in freedom. I didn't at once upon a time. I had to go back to the streets. I had to go back to that life because I didn't know how to live in freedom until I got a hold of the kingdom. And the kingdom got a hold of me. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, my God, please forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now, please forgive the sins of the servants of God, the God of your father. When the message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves. Your translation may say servants. They said, 19 says, but Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? See, some of us won't forgive because we're standing in the place of God. Some of us won't let go because we're standing in the place of. That's a bad place to be in. Verse 20, you intended to harm me, he telling his brothers, Joseph, but God intended it for good. To accomplish, this is critical to my thought, 
to accomplish what is now being done. What's being done? The saving of many lives. Sometimes you got to be the scapegoat. Sometimes you got to forgive first. Sometimes you got to fall on the sword. Sometimes me and First Lady had to go through stuff, my God, and I married so we can overcome it so we can teach y'all to go through y'all stuff. You see, if you, you won't know God as a way maker if you ain't never had to go through nothing. God, I want to know you as a way maker. Well, God said, get ready to go through a trial so I can show you. <laughs> mm, you meant it for harm. But God intended it for good to accomplish what he is, what is now being done, saving many lives. So then don't be afraid, brothers. It's all good. I will provide for you and your children. I'm going to take care of my nephews and nieces. And, oh, my God, that's prophetic right there. Oof. Oh, Pastor Lewis, they missed it. I'm going to take care of you, even though what you've done to me and my nieces and nephews. Hmm. Uh. God allowed what happened in my life, my God, in your life, my God, because I'm going to save, my God, a whole lot of people and my brothers and my nieces and nephews. I'm going to take. Why me, God? Why I got to go through? Why you Because God going to use your life to save some people. I will provide for you and your children. And, and, and he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Father, thank you. As we stand, Father God, up under your Shekinah glory. I'm just asking, Father God, for you to help me do what I cannot do. I am dependent upon the spirit of the living God to guide, lead, and direct. God, govern, and guide my spirit today, Father. As I stand before your people, help me, Father God, to protect your sheep. Oh, my God, don't allow me to say nothing, Father God. Ooh, that's not of your will. Guard me, guide me, and govern me. Father God, save. Take the heart of stone out, put a heart of flesh. Somebody needs this word. And so, Father God, you have filled mm, my belly with living water. Now, as I prepare to open up my mouth, let the oracles of God flow through me, God, and teach them a kingdom word, Father God, that can resonate within them. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen. amen. You may be seated in the presence of the holy God that we serve. Mm. Hallelujah. I'm really excited about all of the young teen. Now, you got some work to do, Jesus. You got a whole lot of young adults. Amen, woman of God. Amen. Y'all ready to go to work? Yeah. Come on, y'all ready to go to work? Yeah. Hey, well, I'm not talking about your nine to five. I'm talking about in the presence of the kings. Y'all ready to go to work? Yeah. Well, we got a whole lot of people that don't like going to their jobs on Monday morning. <laughs> in the world we live in, it's hard to see the power of God in our lives. When we are, write this down, hurting Broken, confused, and weak. Oh, my God. It's hard to see the power. Another word for power is the presence of God operating or working in our lives when we are hurting, broken, confused, and weak. It is hard to see the power of God working sometimes, as I stated, in our lives when our dreams are shattered right before our eyes. Mm. When sorrow fills our heart and there is no room for joy or for peace. Those are the very times, oh my God, when we need and must see, oh God, the power of God working in us, around us, and for us. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, when we're hurting, broken, and confused, we must see the power of God working in us, around us, and for us. The life of Joseph is a testimony to the power of God. Mm -hmm. We all know his story. Oh, my God, I'm going to bring you up to speed for those who don't know a story. I want to remind you that Joseph was a slave. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Who, by the power of God, became the prime minister. Oh, a slave became second in command of the most powerful nation in the world. I started from the bottom, now I'm hurt. Oh, my God, somebody needed to hear that. It's not, it don't matter where you're starting. Oh, oh, my God. He became the prime minister of Egypt, mm -hmm. the most powerful nation in the world at that time. Joseph trials, y'all, listen, lasted roughly 13 years. Chap, Lawrence Peoples are now sentenced you to 13 years of Department of Corrections. His trials lasted 13 years. During those years, it must have been very difficult for anyone observing his life to see the power of God working. Uh, my baby ain't going to make it. 
Monty said, he going to be all right. Monty said, that's just what he need. He need to go lay down for a minute. You got to be able to see the power of God working in trials. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. But despite how things appeared, God was working in Joseph's life to accomplish his will in the life of Joseph. His father and his brothers and the nation of Egypt. So God was working in Joseph's life to accomplish his will. Also in Joseph's life, in his father's life, in his brother's life, in his nation, a slave was responsible. He had that much of a, come here, come here, come here, that much of a, that much of a slave. My God had that much of a mandate dropped on him by God. He was responsible for his father. Jacob became Israel. My God, his brothers, himself, a nation. He had a tall mandate put on his life. But when you look at what Joseph had to go through, because the Bible says he started this out at 17 years old. When you look at everything that the man of God had to go through, how is it that all this was in him? Potential that was yet undiscovered. It took trials to help him to discover what was inside of him. See what I'm trying to say? I'm going somewhere, I promise you. God knows what he's Look at your neighbor and say, God knows what he's doing with you. Mm, mm, mm. I want you to notice. See, Joseph was brought to the place of prime minister, second in command, because God is a generational thinker. God knew that I had to put somebody in place that was going to be able to save this family. Because when they went into Egypt, they was went in at 70. When they came out, they came out as millions. But God needed somebody, my God, to carry on the legacy. So he had to start with a 17-year-old child, Christian, my God, and begin to allow some things to be happening in his life to get him ready, my God, to be the deliverer, to be the sustainer. Come on, to be the one that God was going to use to save his family, to be the one that God was going to use to feed a dying, starving nation, to be someone that God was going to use to help save other people's lives. You don't know why you're going through what you're going through, but God got an eternal plan for your life. You may be the one that God going to use to help save your family. You're going to be the one that God helped use to save a nation, my God. You don't know. Why God is doing and allowing you to go through and experience physical problems, health problems, mental problems, emotional problems, financial problems. You don't know the plan, but you got to keep walking. That's why it says work out, work out, work out your soul salvation. Mm. So the title of this message is, put it on the screen, son. Let me see what you got. There's purpose in it. Oof. There's purpose in it. Everything, Darion, that you have experienced up until right now as you look at me, there's purpose in it. As I was watching Atani, and star her, as, star, as I was looking at Atani, y'all remember when this baby came months ago, she laid right here the whole service, couldn't walk. She had to be carried into the service. And we've been praying, we've been born, born in heaven, and she been making her way in with her little walkers. She went from sitting right there. And now when I looked up and realized, my God, that it, it was a tiny, I began to circle around her prophesying. My God, and I came on the other side of her because she went from being carried into the ministry to standing and worshiping God. Who am I talking to in the church? I can't get nobody there. And she's a young woman. She ain't even 22 years old. She's a young woman. But we used to have to carry her. And now she's able to stand. And watch, you talking about signs, miracles, and wonders. See, y'all missed that. Y'all seen how this baby was when she come up off of her. And look at this woman of God today. There's signs, miracles, and wonders happening inside this church. But you got to be committed. You got to be connected and committed, my God, in order to get what God has for you. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's still on the backside of the mountain sending me messages like, Pastor, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going hard for Christ. She's over there, my God, battling for her life, but standing tall through it all. I'm proud of you, Tony. You're on your way, woman of God. I decree and declare. So there's purpose. There's purpose, my God. Look at Ronnie and say, there's purpose in it. Look at Patrice and say, there's purpose in it. I know sometimes it's hard. My mom's purpose in it. I know you don't want to look at your day because y'all had a fight on your way to church, but tell them it's purpose. Huh? Yeah. So let's look at some of these problems. I'm probably going to just deal with point one. Let's look at some of these problems that Joseph had to go through on his way becoming prime minister. 
Notice I said problems. In context to the story, my God, God used problems as a vehicle. Vehicle means transportation, transport. He used problems to transport this man into what God created him and predestined him to become. Oh, my God, problems, trials. When we read the story, for those that's familiar with the story of Joseph, starting in the Genesis 37 all the way to the end of the book, my God, of chapter 50, my God, we, we can like, oh, God, that man went through a whole lot. Oh, man, why did his brothers do? Some of you right now got wounds from your brothers, wounds from your sister, wounds from your mama, wounds from your father. You got some wounds just like Joseph. Are you with me so far? And so, my God, point one, my God, Joseph dealt with some devastating problems. Look how bold that is. Let that speak to you. Devastating problems. I heard it every Monday. I heard it at Recharge on Wednesday. I heard it on Sundays. I definitely heard it on Sunday mornings in classes. There is all of us have dealt with, uh, some is dealing with some devastating problems, even as I stand here right now. And you're questioning, God, why? If you such... Such and such this, God, then why are you allowing this to happen? Why did that happen? Why did he do me like that? Why did she do me like this? Why am I going through in my body? Why am I going through with my kids? We have a whole lot of whys. Not understanding that when you read the word of God, it teaches you the ways and attributes of God. That's why you got to read the Bible. Because the things that God would allow you to experience and me to experience in life if we don't understand God's dealings, my God, you have what they, what they call, my God, Frank DiMaggio called the dealings of God. The dealings of God. See, God got specific dealings. He got specific situations and I'm, I'm circumstances, my God, that's tailor-made to usher you into your next. Notice I said situations. Trials. So when I taught y'all, my God, we always say every good, the Bible says every good and perfect gift come from above. I've taught y'all, why come we don't see trials as a good and perfect gift from above? And when you are committed to Christ and you desire, my God, to be a change agent and a kingdom advancer for the kingdom, then it was good for me that I was afflicted. You welcome that because you understand it has significant purpose to my becoming. Remember the process of becoming? Trials has significant purpose, reason for you becoming, getting you ready for what God has created you to do. One more time, please. Look at your neighbor and say, there's purpose in it. When Jacob dies, <laughs> dirty dies. <laughs> oh, my God. Go home and tell her one more time. Dirty is purpose in it. Come on, somebody. When Jacob dies, the brothers of Joseph become concerned about their future. They are afraid, my God, that with their father being dead, Joseph will seek retribution, which is revenge. Say, I'm going to teach you. I'm not going to let passion get in the way. Leave vengeance for God. That's liberating right there. Quit trying to stand in the place of God. Quit trying to be hateful and mean and withhold different things and stuff from people because you want to be revengeful. Retribution belongs to the Lord. I'm liberating you right now. Don't you know sometimes if I taught y'all, all it takes is one choice to unlock so many other areas of your life. One decision, listen to me, one decision that you make, my God, led by the Spirit can unlock so many other doors that's locked up in your life. When I decided to accept Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, that one decision changed the whole trajectory of my whole life. This is what become from that one decision. When I was locked up. I wonder what, what decision God is asking you to make. That's keeping you locked up. Keeping you indoors. Keeping you out of doors that you're supposed to be walking in. Doors means access. One decision to commit. One decision to say, you know what? I'm getting out of the familiar. I'm making a decision. I'm going to move forward. One decision, my God, to say, you know what? I'm going to let it go. One decision to say, you know what? I forgive you. One decision to say, you know what? I got the authority and the power, my God, to quit letting my flesh rule me. I'm going to start ruling my flesh. One decision to say, you know what, man of God, woman of God, we can't do this no more. You and I are going to make a decision because we can't lay up and shack up no more. One decision will open up the floodgates of heaven, but you got to have the courage to make it. See, you won't have courage without fear. Fear drives the spirit of courage. Joshua, be strong and courageous. So, my God, if you're going to be courageous, you got to have some fear. If I, what, what, what do I need to be courageous for if I ain't fearful for nothing? Right. 
See, if I say some of us, my God, need the spirit of courageousness to manifest inside of us. So we can make the decisions that we need to make. You want decision away from a completely different life. I know it's testimony after testimony after te- uh, Sitting in this church right now because they chose to make a decision to come to 205 South Shore. I'm being serious. Some of you, my God, need to make some decisions in your personal life because you're keeping your life bound up, locked up, bound up and locked up, and you are frustrated even though you're going through all the formality of the formation of church, but you're not seeing the manifestation of God's goodness operate in your life because you won't make the decisions that God is telling you to make. I'm going to teach you right. It's not enough just to come sit in here and listen to somebody preach the gospel. When you come get a word, you got to do something with a word. That means application. That's why I say don't be hers, but you got to work it out and work it out. Work it out and walk it out. I'm sorry. One decision. Quit trying to be God because you're not and neither am I. They send a message to Joseph telling him their father commanded you to forgive them for what they have done to him years before. This made, oh my God, this made all, they made all this up to convince Joseph to treat them well. See, they was fearful. Jacob is now gone. So they said, man, we, oh, my God, the only thing was keeping Joseph from killing us now that he's second in command is daddy. So what we're going to do, we're going to get together and we're going to tell him that God said that you, I mean, daddy said you need to forgive us. See, they lie. I don't fault them, though. <laughs> you do anything to live. Come on, somebody. They said, no, nah, we got to get, we got to tell him you got to forgive. Daddy said, see, sometimes when, when daddy said it carries a different weight. When father says, they said that <laughs> daddy said you need to forgive us. Joseph could have chosen to say, I don't care what your daddy said, your daddy said, or my daddy said. No, I'm finna get back. I'm finna, I'm, finna, I'm finna get you back. We finna pay tit for tat. We finna render evil for evil. Come on, somebody, like some of us is doing. You say that, oh, I got something for you. Some of us, my God, we got so much chaos going on because we got to have the last word. But when the Bible says a soft answer turns away wrath. And so they lied when they said that daddy said that you have to forgive us. But they even went a little farther. They followed, my God, that up, my God, with a message of personal action. Listen to this. They presented themselves to their brothers and they bowed at his feet and professed themselves to be servants. Now, when you turn to the book of chapter 37... So let me set this up. Let me be a theologian right now. 37, verse 6, it says, he said, talking about Joseph, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. Verse 8, his brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? This is before all this took place. This is the beginning of when everything jumped off. It said, do you, do you plan to reign over us? We, will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, dream talking about Joseph, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream. And this time the sun and the moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father, as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, what is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the manner at hand. So at the end of the story, trying to bring you up to context, my God, that dream, my God, that, that took place in the 17-year-old's life, my God, when he said it, my God, sometimes, oh, my God. See, God had to allow Joseph to go through some things because he was young. And so he had to begin to teach him through experiences. Sometimes we tell our dream to people who ain't ready to handle what we're talking about. He told his dream, and you thought, you would think that I'm telling this to my flesh and blood. But you can have some flesh and blood that's just as jealous of you as your. That's why you have to be led. By the Spirit of God when you do things. Some of us right now is in unforgiveness. Y'all know I like you wanted her, and she is a dime, and she come from royalty. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> See, I'm trying to say, you wanted her, and you tried to get at her, and she chose not to get at you. And so now you now you feeling rejected. But the question, wounded, watch this. But the question you would have to ask yourself, or vice versa, if she wanted you, my God, did God tell you to pursue him? 
Did God tell you to pursue her? See, we pursuing stuff that God never told us to pursue. And then when it don't turn out right now, we offend it. But see, you got to put the ownership back on you. Did God tell you to go to her? Did God tell you to go to him? Did God tell you to invest that money? Did God tell you to invest in that business? Did God tell you to get that job? Did God tell you to move over there? See, we making decisions that we want God to bless the decision. And when he don't bless them, now we mad at God. And now we offended at people. That's the problem with the church. We move with flesh and not being led by the spirit. Who am I talking to in the church? That's why we got to let it go. That's why we got to let some stuff go. See what y'all say? And take some ownership. Be responsible. My guy, you like, you know what? I, I never got clearance from the Holy Ghost. He never told me to do that. He never told me to date her. He never told me to vest that. He never told me to buy that. I went out there and bought that car, my God, out of a need. But I knew I couldn't afford the car. And now the thing that should have blessed me feel like a curse. Who am I talking to in the church? Because I was led by emotions and flesh. Mm. Somebody give God a hand in the church. See, I'm going to teach, teach us how to grow up. Teach us how to grow up. My God, some of us right now are angry and bitter at people for something that we caused. You want it? What I teach y'all? You want what you want when you want it. And now that you got it, and now you don't want it. Oh, my God. So they presented themselves before their brother, and they bowed at his feet. And they profess themselves to be his servant. Another word for servant is slave. And just like the dream, my God, that he had in chapter 37. See, they couldn't accept, my God, that the youngest child, the youngest sibling, was going to be the ruler. I'm the youngest out of the boys. My baby sister is right there. You don't see the youngest out of all seven of us. See what I say? But I'm the youngest out of my brothers. But I'm not the one that was supposed to be doing what I'm doing now. I'm not the one supposed to have this what they sitting in right now. It should have been somebody else. Come on, somebody. Not what I come through. Not what I've been through. Come on, somebody. somebody. So why are you counting yourself out? Yes. Who knows? Come on. Y'all know what I taught y'all. Who knows that you have come, my God, to this place for a time such as this? Come on, going hard. Who knows? Yes. You see what I'm trying to say? But see, when your self-esteem, your self-image, my God, is not shaped. See, I told my class this morning, we got to go back to the Garden of Eden. We got to go back to original, our original thinking. See, in the Garden of Eden, my God, before sin entered the world, come on, somebody, before sin hit the world, before sin entered the world, we thought like Christ. They walked with God, my God, in the cool of the day. See, what I say, it wasn't no fear. It wasn't no depression. It wasn't no suicide. It wasn't no none of that mess. It wasn't, they walked around, my God, these babies off in there. They walked around, come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. They was, they was chilly, chill. But soon the sin into the world, my God, that what they once dominated now dominates them. So the order was reversed. They was ruling the garden, now the garden is ruling them. See, that's why you got to come give your life to Christ so you can get back in rulership. Come on. God created you to rule and dominate and subdue. Come on, somebody. And when you're not in Christ, you're being dominated by the earth instead of you dominating the earth. So that what is ruling you, my God, is out of order when you get back in God. So what did I teach my class? As a spirit-filled man or woman of God, as a son and daughter of God, there should nothing be ruling you but the spirit of the living God. There's no hang-ups and habits that you should not be able to turn your back from uh, and walk away from. Because you got the authority and the power to give it up. Cigarettes, sex, porn, let me go, yeah. baby. I don't care what it is. Yeah. You got the authority to walk away from it. But you got to make a choice. You got the authority to tell depression to keep messing with you at night. You got, a, you got the authority to speak life, my God, until that peace that keep eluding you and escaping you. You can tell every habit, every hang up, every addiction, my God, you coming into submission to the authority that God has ordained for me. But you can't talk like that when you're out of the will of God. You can't talk like that when you're a lukewarm Christian. You can't boldly proclaim that type of stuff when you're not seeking God and going hard after the things of God. And going hard after Christ is not volume. Going, out, going hard after Christ is lifestyle. So you can't, my God, you can't operate in your delegated, thank you, Holy Ghost, delegated authority that the king gave you when you are plugging in and unplugging. Plugging in and unplugging. Coming when you want to, leaving when you want to. Reading when you want to, not reading when you want to. Praying when you want to, not praying when you want to. Then when it comes time to use your authority, you ain't got no power. And so that what you're supposed to dominate now dominate you because you are powerless. Come on, who am I talking to in the church? That's why I tell you not to have a form of God. You can't have a form of godliness. Many people got a form of godliness, but they ain't got no power. 
Oh, you, you in church, you got all this church etiquette and everything, but you can't win. Mm, Lord, it go. Oh, you've been defeated in your personal life, and God called you to rule. God called you to dominate. God called us to subdue, Genesis 126. I'm talking to you up top, too. I know it's a lot of y'all up there. I'm talking to you online. It's Bible. God would never ask you to do something that you don't have the power to do. Who am I talking to in the church? See, that's another thing. You got to settle that. Then, my God, this is why I told my class, do we really trust God like we say we do? Because God, if he tell you to do it, that means you can, you can do it. He had never asked you to do something, son, that you don't have the capability of doing. And if you can't do it, guess what? He's going to send Mr. Woodbury to help you do it. Two is better than one. And if y'all two can't get it, then Minister Melvin will come. And now we got three. We showed enough going to win. Who am I talking to in the church? Woo, y'all missed that revelation right there. God is never going to ask you to do something that you cannot do. So don't let fear drive you. Fear is an intruder. Somebody need to write that down. I'll post that. Fear is an intruder. That's of the second item. I mean, first item. That ain't of Jesus. Ain't no fear in Jesus. Yeah. So if you operate in the men, now that's good fear as I taught in my class and bad fear. Now, you know, like I said, you need some fear to have become courageous. But see, you have healthy fear and then you got bad fear. I'm talking about the fear that paralyzes you. I'm talking about the fear that make you waver. I'm talking about the fear that make you doubt even the word of God and you read it every day in your little 10-minute devotion. You read it, but do you believe it? I'm talking about that fear that's robbing you of purpose, robbing you of potential, robbing you of victory, robbing you of peace. You got to take 40 cups of night quill to go to sleep at night. That's not kingdom. I'm not trying to condemn nobody. I'm trying to tell you who you are. You got to speak to that stuff. God told Moses, don't sp- speak to the rock. Don't smite it. Some of us just smiting and hitting out of anger. When well, God said, just speak to it. Call those things that be not as though they are. Speak to situations. Decree and declare situations in your life. Command it to line up. Command it to line up. Take a walk. My God. They're, they are sure Joseph will want to take revenge. Talking about his brothers. For the trouble they have caused him. Okay, instead, in verse 20, he, it tells us that Joseph looks at his frightened brothers and says, you intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. In that simple statement, y'all, listen, Joseph sums up 13 years of suffering. That mirrors my life. 13 years of addiction. 13 years of prison and all that type of stuff. Sorrow and pain. Oh, my God, you meant it. Oh, God meant it for my good. Oh, Lord, it still turned out for my good. In that simple statement, Joseph sums up 13 years of suffering, sorrow, and pain. That statement called to remembrance, remembrance all the trials Joseph had endured in the past at the hands of his brothers and others. Let me give you a little bit of it. Let me, let me bring some of y'all up to speed and remind some of you, my God, of everything this young slave or this young teenager had to endure on his way to being second in command. Don't miss that. To the most powerful nation in the world. And God used trials to prepare him for it. Let me say, like, what is God preparing you for that you're missing it? You're missing it because you say, that can't be God. I can't be going. That, I know God ain't telling me I got to do that. I know teach God ain't telling me I got to keep going to the back and forth to the hospital about this sickness. You laying hands on people and they getting healed and you still battling. Yeah, he telling you. Stay right there, because when I do it, because everything that God does, he wants the glory. Sometimes God will let you suffer. Oh, my God. Some people say that wasn't nothing but God did deliver that girl. That wasn't nothing but God did deliver that man. God will let you suffer, my God, in the front of people. And then when he do it, they're going to know that wasn't nothing but God. Because everything that God does, he wants the glory. He ain't going to show his glory with no man. See, God can't deliver some of y'all because you're trying to show the glory with it. God said, I'm not. I'm going to wait till you get out the way so I can get in the way. Then I'm going to set you free so that you can give me all the glory. And you wonder why I'm radical because it took a, ooh, a holy God to deliver a fool. David said, I got to be a fool for Christ. Who am I talking to in the church? Some of y'all can't get your freedom because you if you God do it, instead of you honoring God, you're going to think you did it in your own strength. You're going to think your own wisdom did it. You're going to think 12 steps did it. <laughs> uh, you're going to think your husband did it. You're going to think your wife did it. God said, I can't do it, Tracy, because you're going to share glory with somebody else. I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it, Lawanya. I ain't doing it, Heidi. When he do it, it's already done. Let me speak to you, daughter. The Bible says, whom the son set free is free indeed. When Christ died and he bowed his head, he said, it's finished. 
Oh my God, we are already free. You know what we got to do? Choose to be free. Who am I talking to in the church? It's a choice, Jackie. All you got to do is say, Lord, today I'm no longer being dominated. Today I'm taking rulership. Today I'm taking dominance over this thing. I'm not going to let this stuff dominate no more because I'm out of order when I'm allowing stuff to dominate me instead of God. God said I'm already free. Whom the Son, that's why you got to be saved to make these declarations. These are kingdom declarations. This ain't church stuff. This is kingdom. You got to be connected to the king. Oh my God, then you can decree that I'm free and now I got to make a choice to be free. Who am I talking? Then you walk different when you're free, baby. Oh my God, God blesses you real good when you're free. Oh my God, when you lock in on God, baby, I tell you, he'll blow people's mind. Ooh, juju, yeah, juju, baby. Type it on the line. Who am I talking to in the church, baby? Go. You got to make a decision. Mm. Joseph dealt with some devastating problems on his way to becoming the prime minister. Y'all say this with me. Who knows? Mm. Mm. Up top, look at your neighbor. I'm looking at y'all. Say, who knows? <laughs> Prophesy, homie. Look at her and say, who knows? There you go. <laughs> Brother Reed, who knows? Look at this right here. He was hated by his brothers. Genesis 37, 4 through 11. They threatened his brothers to kill him but ended up selling him to Ishmaelite traders as a slave. The Ishmaelites sold him, so he was sold twice. Sold to the Ishmaelite traders, the Ishmaelites sold him. Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce Joseph, because Joseph was handsome like Pastor Peoples. And so she was watching Joseph while he was serving in the palace, Kevin, and so she took notice. He said, man, baby, you're dying. My husband is off doing whatever he's doing. I got to go for it. I'm being serious. I'm trying to make y'all understand the story. He in the palace, mother. Michelle working, being found faithful, shoving the sheep done, tending to the duties that the king gave him. And while he's tending his business, see, you ain't got to be messy. And the devil's watching. You could be found faithful and the devil still got his eyes on you. Joseph was being faithful in the house. And while he's being faithful, this lustful demon is trying to attack him. See what I'm trying to say? But because of his integrity, my God, he said, my God, my, 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 my king, my, my boss, my God, don't concern himself. I'm paraphrasing with anything that's going on in this kingdom. All this kingdom belongs to him and me. The only thing, Kevin, that's off limits to me is you. So Joseph said, how can I sin? Watch this. Not against Pharaoh, but against God. See, you got reverence when you operate in integrity. See, when you serious Jackie committed to God, he didn't say, how can I sin against my boss? How can I sin against Pharaoh? How can I sin against God? Oh, my God, when you have a healthy reverence and a healthy fear of God, see, it'll make you not do stuff your flesh want to do. I want to talk and say it, I want it, but I can't do it. Because God's going to be not going to be pleased with that because it's offensive to God. See, some of us got to say, God, I need a healthy dose of reverence. He said, how can I sin against God? And then he said, watch this, see, and do such a wicked thing. He saw sexual sin as wickedness. <laughs> wickedness. To be fornicating and you ain't married, that's wickedness. To be living with a man or a woman is wickedness. Christians. Oh, y'all know I'm going to talk about it at 205. So if you just see it uh, shacking up, see, they, they, they ain't got no weight to it. We just shacking up. We shacking up in wickedness. See, that hits a little bit different. That cuts. Ooh, that cut me around. <laughs> Did I say that? See, I'm being serious, but practical and showing some humor. That mindset right there will keep you bound. Justifying that it's okay. For you to sin against God and think that God don't care. Just because God has allowed you. This cause, no, no. You have cohabitated. That don't mean God approved that. Delayed don't mean what? There's consequences for what? Every action. From the pulpit there. 
That's why you got to take in consideration your choices. That's why the Bible, I'm giving you a book, tells us and commands us, minister me to live well. Living well, my God, is not driving certain cars, living in certain houses, but managing your day-to-day affairs according to the king's statutes, laws, and commands. Just because the culture is doing it, Chelsea, don't mean that I'm allowed to do it. Everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. Just because other professing, keyword professing Christians are doing it, that don't mean you get a right to do it. Especially if you know, the Bible says who those who know to do right and yet choose to do wrong to him and the sin. It may be okay for him or her, but it ain't okay for me because I know better. See, you got to quit giving yourself passes to do stuff because you see somebody else doing it. So if they doing it, then I can do it. Well, my God, they, the hand of God may be different on their life than it is on your life. See, that's why it's wrong to think that my son would be able to endure what I had to endure. Because what I went through, I had the grace to go through it. He might not. It might kill him. Who in my life got to suffer if I remain the same? See, some of y'all, my God, you think, I made it out, girl. You're telling your kids, and you're going to make it out. You don't know that. Be careful what you speak in the atmosphere. Quit, quit. Be careful what you are condoning and allowing to go in your kids' life because you came out and you're doing a little better. That don't mean they're going to make it out. The very thing you come out of might be the very thing that kills them. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, going off of Christ. Somebody give God a hand in the church, man. Mm. Mm. So he went through some devastating problems. This woman then looked at him and started lusting out of him. My God, and then she lied on him. She lied on him. She spread the terrible lie that Joseph had attempted to rape her. Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce Joseph. Potiphar, has, 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 Potiphar then, the king comes back and she goes to tell him, this slave of yours, this Hebrew guy of yours, you brought in her, has made sport of me. Some translations say, and, my God, and the king went plumb crazy. What? This man, I set this man up. I'm trying to help you. Y'all know y'all love how I make it practical. I set you up. You are, Thank you, Lord. you are second in command to the pastor. I gave you authority that I once had. And you try to sleep with my wife? So the, I come back, I'm on one. Oh, I can't get nobody to say I guess I'm the only one that protects my wife. I guess, what about me and that in the church? I know y'all flowing with me, but I'm just saying, you, you, I give you some authority. You trying to sleep with my wife, so he come back, he ain't got no understanding. So he immediately say, he called for his subjects and said, get him, Shah, throw him in prison. So he now, the same slave, malicious, in prison behind something he didn't do. Some of you are being persecuted and lied on and talked about. Behind something you didn't do or something you didn't say. So now you got somebody that you can identify with. So ain't nothing you going through ain't nobody in the Bible been through. So it ain't just you by yourself. It don't mean that God don't like you, my God, because somebody else has went through what you went through. So God, let me So if he don't like you, he don't like him either. See, some of us think that we the only one that been through what we've been through. But I, because see, you don't know that because you don't read the Bible. See, I'm trying to say, so he been lied on now, Pharaoh and throwed him in the prison. Are you with me so far? And then Joseph stays in prison, my God, for many years. Here's another thing. Joseph was forgotten by two other prisoners. He met and helped while he was in prison. So here's Joseph in prison, my God. He prophesied, my God, to the butler and the, and, and, and the cupbearer and tell them that one going to be restored, the other going to be beheaded. And he told them, my God, whatever you do when they get out, the one get out, he said, don't forget about me. Go speak favorably to the king. I've been taken hostage. I'm in here and I didn't even do nothing. Please. And don't forget about me. So guess what? Dirty. Oh, my God. He, they get out of prison. The butler get out of cupboard, get out of prison, and he forget about Joseph. See, some of y'all, my God, God intentionally allow people to forget about you. Because you know why? Because it wasn't time yet. <laughs> oh, my God. It wasn't time to release you. It wasn't time to set you free yet. My God, the right people ain't noticed you yet. The right, mm, I said the right people ain't noticed you yet. So, my God, you need another two more years. Come on, somebody. You need to sit a little bit longer. I need to keep my hands on you. I'm the pilot and you the clay. I got to mold you a little bit more, baby. You ain't ready. You almost out. Let me put a little bit more two years. 24 miles. My God, I've been up Come on, God, two more years. Let me out. Let me out. God said, I can't let you out. You come out too soon. You ain't going to be ready to handle what I'm taking you. I got to keep you in the fire. I got to keep my hands on you. I'm molding you and shaping you for your purpose, baby. Oh, my God. He said, I'm molding you. 
And so he allowed the cupbearer to forget about him for two years. I remember when I made parole in 96, governor wouldn't sign it. Parole boy says, yes, let Juju out. Governor said no. 97, let him out. Governor said no. But I told God, whatever you do, don't let me out until I'm ready. I thought I was ready in 96. I thought I was ready. Though he dies in 97, God said, I need some extra time with you. And now that I understand and know what I know, I needed every bit of those 24 years, months. Oh, my God, because I might have would have backslid. I might have would have turned away from God. Oh, my God, but wow, God had me in that prison for them extra two years. He was like a chess player. He was, a, oh, my God, he was orchestrating stuff. He had to make sure this person was in the right place, that person in the right place. Because what am I about to do? Oh, my God, I got, you got to give me time to work. See, some of y'all don't want to give God time to work. The Bible said that it takes patience to do the will of the Father. See, you trying to rush something. You want it now. God will worry about then. You want it right now. You want God to fix it now, but God prepare you for a place that He's taking you. But so you gotta work. You want God to fix it now. God said, Nope, I'm getting you ready for where you're going. Who am I talking to? So I gotta keep my hands on you. And so Joseph, a young teenager, went through all these series of things. But God was perfecting him. God was getting him ready. God wasn't too concerned about him being locked up. He said, You need this little extra time. Give me some time. See, God need a single women, God need a little more time with you. That's why you don't want to move him in. Don't move him in. Don't move her in. You don't need why? You, that's wicked anyway. I'm sorry. But God need a little more time with you. You think you're ready, my God, because you didn't forgave that one, the last relationship, but you're still broken from the last relationship. You need a little more time. See, we can think we're ready for something and not be ready for it. You need a little bit more time. Look at your neighbor and say, God needs some time. Oh, my God. But don't become, uh, when you decree that, my God, don't use it as an excuse to be lazy and slowful, my God. God, I, you, you said, Pastor said we need time. No, you need time, but make a decision while you wait on time. You got to make some decisions. And so, my God, this man, I'm back to, my God, this man went through a series. And think about it. It was systematic. Ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. I'm coming in for a landing. It was sister. It started because he was hated by his brothers. Can I help you understand something? It was God that caused his brothers to hate him. It was God because God was going to use that hate. See, God used everything he went through. They throwed him in a pit. The people came. They was going to kill him, but the people came by and they sold him. And then they took him to a place, to Egypt, because that's where God was going to deliver the people from, Egypt. And then he got sold again. But he got, I'm getting ahead of myself, my God. But he got sold to the right people. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he got placed in the right place. The right king that wasn't envious of him put him in authority. Yeah. See, you got to allow God time to work. You got to allow time, God time to be strategic and set things up in your life. See, we want it too fast. We don't want to go through the process of becoming like I taught y'all. You don't want to work this thing that I taught my class. You got to get comfortable with the mundane. You got to get comfortable with the day-to-day -day when ain't nothing happening. Ain't no big things going on, my God. You just read. You just praying. You just sharing the gospel, my God. You just doing the things that you do. See, many people backslide because they get bored serving God. You got to be able to stay flat-footed and planted, baby, when ain't no highlights going on, when ain't no excitement going on. On, but I'm still digging. I'm still focused. You got to keep a kingdom focused. Many of us backslide because we get boring. Boring. Christianity become boring. Reading your Bible become boring. Praying become boring. Coming to church become boring. And so therefore we're like, I need something. I ain't excited enough. So I return back to Egypt. I return back to the club. I return back to the familiar. I would go back and visit porn and all of those type of stuff because you need some excitement. You haven't learned to be content, Paul said. And whatever state I'm in, if I got much, I'm good. If I got little, I'm straight. If I got bread, I'm good. If I ain't got no money, I'm good. But whatever, I'm not going back to my former way of living. Some of y'all need that mindset. Our commitment begins to diminish, my God, when we get bored with the routine. As I taught y'all two weeks ago, whenever your commitment start diminishing, you start backsliding. You start re-entertaining stuff that God set you free from. That's why I teach y'all it's one thing to get free, it's another thing to stay free. And people are not going to understand your pursuit. People are not going to always understand your pursuit. They make it half hardly serve God, but it takes everything I bring to the table, baby, for me to stay in the race, baby. Oh, my God, because the enemy be coming after me because he know if he cut my head off, it's going to affect a whole lot of people. Who am I talking? So, my God, don't think everybody's going to salute you. 
Don't think your family members, your brothers and sisters, my God, and your mamas and daddies, I don't care. My God, everybody ain't going to be your number one fan, baby. Sometimes you got to find strength and encouragement outside of the home. God had to give Joseph a whole new family for a season until he worked on his brothers. And then, my God, God was working out that dream that your brother's going to come and bow down. And the Bible said, the Bible said that they came and bowed down, but God had to work. You got to give God time to work. Oh Quit God. thinking everybody's going to celebrate you. Quit thinking those that's closest to you going to be your biggest fan. The Bible says some of your worst enemies be those of your own household. That's your family members. Here's another thing that affects the people of God. We close it. Sometimes, my God, my God, people know you by the flesh, but they don't know you by the spirit. What that means, Juju? That means they know Juju. They don't know Pastor Peoples. They remember what I did. That's my brother. That's my sister. You know, all of that. Miss me with that. I'm on a whole nother level, baby. You just don't know it. Because you know me by Juju. You don't know me by Pastor Peoples because you're not around me. See, some of y'all, my God, won't make a decision when it comes to your family, my God, because you're trying to hold on there. Because you know if you make a decision, it's going to require you a separation time. I need to separate till I get healthy. That don't mean I'm better than you. That don't mean I don't love you. It's just the route that I got to go for the city. God had to deliver Joseph completely away from his family, allow him to be in prison, in a pit. Come on, somebody, lied on, forgot and talked about, my God, just so he can do a work in his life. Sometimes God got to remove you in order to give you back to your family. I had to be removed from my family for four years to, get, to go come back to my family. He worked on me. He molded me. He set me free, totally free. Oh, my God, because he had you in mind. See, sometimes somebody else got to get free in order for you to get free. People not going to always understand your transformation. Do it take all that? You got to go to church? You got to go to man's meeting? You got to be fasting for 21 days? Dang, we just got through celebrating New Year. You ought to be turned up. We had made it to 2024, and now you talking about fasting on January the 2nd, abstaining from food and dollar? Yeah. Well, I'm going, it takes all that. What I'm called to do, your mantle ain't my mantle, baby, so you're not going to understand my calling. Who am I talking? See, see? So I just liberated some of y'all. Everybody not going to understand. Everybody not going to understand when God's so working on you. We didn't understand. My God and Joseph family didn't understand. Everybody not going to understand. Everybody not going to understand. That's why you got to have a healthy self-image. That's why you got to have a healthy self-awareness. You can't be, you got to be delivered from the opinions of, of people. You can't let people sabotage you. Can't let people hold you back. You can't allow people to stop the plan of God for your life, man. There is no way possible that I would be able to do the things that God got me doing with the background that I come from. But I'm so glad that God exposed me. What brother Ford them at? Raise your hands. They were there. What there? They, they must be back. I'm so glad that God exposed me to the kingdom message. And he made me understand. Jackie, Tierra, and Chelsea. They're my nieces. That's John's wife, y'all. Right there. My God. But he made me understand. God made me understand, Jackie, that the Bible is about a king in this domain, mean kingdom. And we are subjects in this kingdom. So if I'm in God's kingdom, he's the supreme ruler of this kingdom, and he allowed me to be in the kingdom, then I got to come under submission to his authority. I got to shape my life and govern my life according to what the king said. Because the Bible says that the king has the power to keep, invite you in and then yeah. kick you out. Yeah. See, that's what you don't understand. The king has all authority. There is no other authority more powerful than the king. And what he decrees is what goes. So you got to understand this is not just some book that you think that a man wrote. These are the very words inscribed of God. I promise you, my God, for those that has really ministered me ever had an encounter with God, my God, there is no other book, Solo, that has changed my life the way the Bible has. 
So when I was incarcerated, I'm through, my God. You know, you got many people, my God, that think that this is a white man gospel and this is, you know, all this old stuff I had to walk through. People laugh at you. Oh, you're a Christian. And you believe in that old white man stuff and all that old stuff you have to go through. Yeah, yeah. But I tried so much stuff, Tracy. I tried so much stuff, my woman of God, to get myself free. But when I opened up this constitution yeah, and when yeah. God taught me that this is a, if you just line your life up according to what this word say, if you just submit to what this Bible say, you'll watch me do things that nobody, even your mama, your sisters, your sister-in-law, your nieces, nobody would thought that you would ever do. If you just submit and come into alignment to me, you'll watch me blow not only your family's mind, but people that knew you win. You was operating as juju. Are uh, you listening to me, Matt? So when I understood that this is about God, a king, and I'm in his kingdom, but in order to stay in his kingdom, in order to reap the benefits and everything that this book, uh, that the kingdom has for me, I got to be in alignment. That's why the Bible says, seek first the kingdom and all of his righteousness and these things. What things? Everything that you need will be added unto you when you line your life up according to the king's way, not the culture way. Not the way you think you should. You can't serve God the way you want to. That's why it says, joy, lean not unto my own understanding, but acknowledge the king in all thy ways. Line your life up according to the kingdom. But you will never know how to line your life up if you don't never read the book. Yeah. And when I got a hold of this, that's why Lily almost cried. When the doctors exposed us to this minister Melvin and minister T and made us understand this ain't about no church. He quit teaching church and started teaching kingdom. I'm glad I'm a subject in the kingdom. I'm glad that I have access to everything that the king owns. As a child of God, you have access. It's like you got access. You and Juju to everything I got. And I got plenty. See, I'm trying to say, I have access. So just think when you go higher, you got access to everything that heaven has to offer you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. That's a beautiful place, Christian, to be in, Christian. To know that I have access, nieces, to everything. Oh, my babies. Do y'all understand? Oh, God. I'm done. My, my brother's children. Y'all know how much John did that. Y'all know how much my brother did to help me when I was sick. He did everything he could. Everything that money could do. Amen, y'all. Everything my sister, everything that money can do, my brother tried to do to help me get clean and sober, help me get my life together. Now, who knows? This slave to drugs and gangs in prison is standing here talking to my brother's wife and my nieces and my sister. My God, my sister, I curled her through so much. Nico went through so much with me and Monty behind our addictions, behind prison. And now my sister, my sister-in-law and my nieces. You mean to tell me we're going to come and bow? Is you mean to tell me we're going to come and bow? Oh, no. You the baby brother. It don't work like that. That's not the order. But in God, he disrupts the order. So, as I close the sermon, then finish, we're finishing. I, my attempt, let me let you know what my goal was. My attempt was to get you and I, I and you to understand that some of the very things, my God, that we are fighting and wrestling against. Some of the very things, my God, that we see as the devil. Some of the very things that's keeping us up at night. That's causing us so much pain and so much whatever. Who knows? Joseph went to 13 years. Just imagine 13 years of consistent, devastating disappointments and problems. Devastation and disappointments and problems. 13 consecutive years in a row of nothing but suffering. And he started out at 17 years old. Read Genesis 37. He was a teenager when God started this. But God knew that he created Joseph for the sole purpose of being a deliverer. God know what he's doing with your life. Baby Cole, that's why we didn't die out there. God got a plan for our life. God got a plan for your life, Christy. God got a plan for your mother. But you got to find and you got to discover that plan. And so as I stated, my God, you got to quit looking at the things you are going through. As everything is the devil. Because you should have learned today that, okay, God will use situations that don't make sense to my natural mind to execute his will in my life. God used trials to prepare Joseph to be second in command. I wonder what God is preparing you for. 
Would you sit long enough? Would you sit at his feet long enough? Would you let him keep his hands on you long enough, even when it get hot? As I had Vontez post, my God, God don't transform you in cold water. He transforms you in hot water. You got to get in the water, baby, and it got to be good and hot. Don't nothing change in cold water. There's purpose in it. Let it go. Joseph said, you meant it for harm, but God meant it for my good. That bitterness, that unforgiveness, that situation that you can't seem to let go, Joseph did. Why you won't? We have to make a choice. I had to. There's a whole lot of stuff I had to overcome and deal with on my way to where I'm at today as I stand before y'all, which qualifies me to be able to talk to y'all. I'm not standing up here in no unforgiveness. I'm straight. I'm not saying I'm perfect or none of that. I'm just saying I had to do the very thing I'm telling y'all to do. I had to do. You don't get hurt, Matt, my God, sidestepping the plan and the purposes of God. You got to go through the process. I've been through the process and still going through the process. So I'm not asking y'all to do nothing that I don't do. Just like I got to get it in, you got to get it in. Just like I got to remind you that it's purpose in it, I'm reminding myself that it's purpose in it. We in this together. It ain't no big eyes and little use up off of her. All I am is a senior pastor. And all that means I'm the chief servant, the head servant to serve you. That's all that consists of. So I'm working mine out just like you. I'm no better than nobody in here, but I'm committed. I'm not involved. There's a difference. Bow your heads. Someone may be here that will say, you know, I didn't look at it like he, like you, Pastor, shared it. But I know that I, I want some things different in my life, and I can't fully access them until I be committed to the king. So I got to be willing to give my life to the king in order to get the full manifestation, the full blessings of God. You ought to be tired of being sprinkled. You should want the full commanded blessing that comes from God. There are certain things as a believer that you automatically get because you are a son or daughter of Christ. But there's other things, my God, you have to go a little deeper and a little farther to receive. But if you are here and you don't know Jesus Christ, meaning that you've heard about Christ You've been in church, so forth, but you have never said, you know what, I need to confess Jesus publicly as my Lord and Savior, and I need to allow him to start the process of transforming my life so I can experience the things that Pastor was talking about today. If you would like, and please, oh my God, I was telling, oh, stay with me, stay with me. I was telling one of my spiritual daughter's son. How many of my partners said, Jew, I'm coming to church. Jew, I'm coming to church. And they came. And I'm not saying this being insensitive, y'all. They came. But they didn't come because they walked in. They was rolled in. So I had to do their home going services. Because they kept telling themselves that they got time. But they didn't know that they didn't have time. This is why you can't play Russian roulette with your soul. Because nobody knows the day. I'm not talking about when Christ returns, when your day come, when God will require your soul to return back to him. And I would rather for you to be in position, fully in alignment with God, than to leave from this place and not have an opportunity, my God, after all that God has said and done, to give your life really to Christ, my God. And so if you would like to do that today, and you're not afraid, and you're not concerned about the opinions of people, don't allow the enemy to tell you that, ooh, like we hear all the time, I don't want to be faking with God, so I'm going to make sure I'm ready and, and being real before I give my life to Christ. I want to let you know, neither one of us can change ourselves. It takes God to change us. You got to come just like you are. In the Baptist religion, they tell you to come as you are, and they're talking about clothes. That's not what the Bible means. Come as you are, meaning your condition. Whatever you, whatever habits, whatever hangups, whatever situations you got going on, God says, come just like that and watch God do a work in your life.
So if you would like to give your life to Christ, my God, I would like for you to extend your hand real high if you're not ashamed. And you want to say, here am I. Thank you for those two hands. Thank you for that hand. Anybody else? All up in the balcony. How are you up there? So you're telling me as I look up top that every last one of you are in right standing with God. And if you are, feel no condemnation. Feel no pressure. But if you are not, I'm asking you by God to be honest with yourself. If you die today, will you, are you ready to stand before God and her job well done? Anybody else down low? Anybody else down low? For those, my God, mm, that would like to give their life to Christ for the very first time. Listen to my verbiage for the very first time. I'm going to ask you to get up and make your way down to one of my altar workers. If you could just come now. Those that got their hand up. Thank you for these two ladies that just joined the ministry. We give God the glory. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come stand with one of them. Come stand with one of them. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? So what I'm going to ask that you do, my God, if y'all just walk with them, they're going to take y'all to a room and they're going to lead y'all to Christ. Now, to those who like to recommit themselves, those who would like to, my God, go a little further. You might not need to recommit. You may just need a little more time to spend praying, my God. If that's you, you my God, and you want to recommit yourself, what does that mean? That you know what, Pastor? I need to, uh, there's some things I need to work out, and I've been trying to do it in my own strength, and I need help from God. There's some habits, some hang-ups, some situations, some mindsets, my God, some relationships. I don't know, my God, that's going on in my life that it's going to take God, and I know it, and so I want to come, my God, and ask God to help me. If that's you, my God, would you please come? Just come from all over the temple. Just come. If you need God to touch you in any way, just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Thank you. Come on. Bring it up. Bring it up for me, Brother Ford. Bring it up. People are coming. People are coming. You can put on the screen, Mario. Those that have to leave, you're more than welcome to leave. But we take care of kingdom business at 205. My God, sometimes it takes a little time for people to say, you know what? Let me get up there and make that decision. My God. My God. If you need prayer, come on. Why don't you come? If you're ready to commit, my God, and recommit yourself, why don't you come? My God, come on, I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. I'm waiting on you. Come on, bring it up. Come on, bring it up. For all those, my God, that's getting ready to exit, we see you on tomorrow for Monday Night Discipleship. But if you need prayer, just come on up. We're going to pray. We're going to pray. Woo, let God move. Let God move. Let God heal. Let God touch. Come on. Make me a vessel. What do you need from God? How can God help you? Woo, Jesus. Come put it on the altar. Come put it on the altar. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. It's me, God. I surrender. I lay it down, God. Woo, my God. I lay it down, God. Oh my God. Come on, God have need of you. Come on, pray. Come on. Remember, I can't do it for you. God got to do it. Make me a vessel, God. I submit and I surrender. Help me break a loose from this unhealthy relationship. Help me get about these situations I'm in, God. Touch my mind, touch my body, God. Give me a fire for God again. Help me fall in love with you one more time, God. Make me in a vessel, God. Ooh, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, God, thank you for the people of God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Come on, y'all, let the altar come on and pray. Come on, come on. God got to do it for you. Come on. All of you that's at the altar, come on, talk to God. Yes, Lord. Come here, Heidi. Heidi, come pray for this baby right here. Right here. Thank you. Right here, daughter. Come on, Miss Sandra. Come on. All these women up pray. Y'all come on now. Let's go. Let's work these people. Woo, come on. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Ah, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, 